Know where you are going on time, my friend. Know where you are going on time. Where you have descent to run. Yes, sir. Understanding the times and seasons of life. If you miss your planting season as a farmer, you have lost out of the harvest for the year. Understanding the times and seasons of life. We serve a God of times and seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. A time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. And this God makes all things beautiful in his time. So we must be conversant with his timings not to lose the beauty ordained for each season in our life. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11. In 1 Chronicles 12 and 32, we have the sons of Issachar who had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do at any point in time. 1 Chronicles 12, 32. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they knew not the time of their visitation. This is the prime time of your life. Please be sensitive. The season you are in now, according to scriptures, is where your future is determined. Therefore, don't sell off your bad right. One is your seasons of visions where you have a bearing for your life. Your young men shall see vision. Your young men shall see visions. Joel 2, 28 and 29. Your young men shall see visions. Your young men shall see visions. Joel 2, 28 and 29. So you are in your age of vision. The age of discovery of your bearing in life. That's what qualifies it to be the prime season of every life. Prime. Prime. It's a custodian of your future. You sell up. You have sold out your future without knowing. First John 2, 13 and 14. I've written to you, young men, because you have overcome the world. It's the season of overcoming the issues of the present, including that of the future, including those of the future. Your season of building up for triumph, triumphant living. Verse 14, I've written to you, young men, because you are strong. The glory of young men is their strength, and the glory of old men is their gray hair. You are strong. It's your season of strength against the day of battle. If you faint in the day of battle, it's because your strength is small. Proverbs 24, verse 10. the word of God abides in you, your age of discoveries. Your age of discoveries, discovery of treasures in the world. 
discovery of treasures in the world. Discovery of treasures in the world. My son, you have two eyes. Can you make one to look up? I want to look down and say, try it. It didn't work. Anytime you're looking onto me, to, to men, never claim to be looking onto me, but fix your eyes on me, you'll never be ashamed. Discoveries. You are in your age of discoveries, which defines the beauty of your future. Discoveries. I've never had to go begging once by that discovery. My son, there's a place for you on top if you're interested. He said to me from this room 28, verse 1. I said, I'm interested. And whatever I tell you to do, do it. So, doing it brought us to Canaan land. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. It may not sound logical. It may look abusive. As if you have no IQ. Whatever I tell you to do, do it. You're on your way to the topmost top. Very simple discoveries. Young man. The word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Awesome season. Season of vision, of triumph, of strength, of discoveries. The most loaded season of a man's life. I found in those days, yes, that a man that's diligent in business, he shall stand before kings, shall not stand before me, man. Be diligent in your business. You don't need no connection with anybody. They will seek to connect with you. Yes, sir. Simple. I cannot imagine one day when I was sitting in somebody's office and say, it is coming first. Where will I even have the time? No, no, no. Those who do know their God, don't beg men. Those who do know God, don't beg men. Your days of begging are over. Amen. There are discoveries in that book that will make you live a begging-free life. That will put in command of situations and circumstances. Set yourself to make the most of this season. He said, remember now, the Lord your God, in the days of your youth, before the evil days come, when you will say, I have no Pleasure in them. You don't discover the treasure in giving today. You remain a non-giver and end up a pauper. The earlier you discover, the easier it is for you to engage. Then you're all running. You don't discover praying the the power and blessing of praying kingdom and having prayer now, by the time issues arise over your life, over your head, here and there, kingdom what? <laughs> you have too much weight to deal with. Remember now, the Lord your God, Ecclesiastes 12, 1, in the days of your youth, before the evil days come, when you will say, I have no pleasure in them. That's how beautiful this season is. That's how loaded this season is. No destiny here shall be wasted. Yeah. Your destiny shall not be wasted. Yeah. Your destiny shall not be wasted. Yeah. You are in the planting season of your life. Every seed of the world planted in your heart today guarantees a harvest of testimonies tomorrow. Every seed of the word said, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Luke chapter 8 and verse 11, the seed is the word of God. Every seed of scriptures sown in your good and honest heart today guarantees a bountiful harvest of testimonies tomorrow. Every. I was 22 when he sowed the seed of my sister in my heart. 
I wasn't called to be. I wasn't going for ministry. I was just enjoying myself in the Lord and just loving Him. I mean, <laughs> every seed, every seed of scriptures sown in your good and honest heart today guarantees supernatural harvest tomorrow because it's the incorruptible seed, the word of God. You can't destroy it when it's sown, it's bound to yield harvest. I was 22 when I said, Holy Spirit, if you are, if you are, if you are here and you truly guide, guide me now. I don't want to ask anybody in this town where these fellows live. And I said, go forward. What? Go to a T junction, make a left. I was 22 when I heard the voice of the Holy Ghost, succulent, body toning, unmistakable. He's still speaking to me today. Praise God. Uh -huh. Every seed of scriptures sown into your good and honest heart today guarantees a bountiful harvest tomorrow. So don't just be hearing the thing. Receiving them in your heart is what creates a future. Receiving them in your heart is what creates a future. Receiving them in your heart is what creates a future. How important is this season? For instance, the last time I knew, you cannot be enlisted as a trainee astronaut outside the age of 21. So those who made their way into space, they get started early. You can't train as a commercial pilot after a certain age. You can go for private license and then if you kill yourself, that's your arrangement. <laughs> but there's an age where you cannot be entrusted with other human lives. No matter how much grief you have for professional sportsmanship, a particular age comes, you cannot, you are no longer eligible. You are no longer eligible. No longer eligible. You can't start a football career at 40. No, there is no club that will take that liability. <laughs> you have become untrainable. Because the boys who are doing it are just 17, 18. When they dribble, you fall down. And then you may not stand up again. <laughs> Amen. Too late. Too late. Too late. That makes this season great for you. Know where you are going on time, my friend. Know where you are going on time. When you have the strength to run. Yes, sir. When you have the strength to run. Everything about life is timed. May you not miss your season. May you not miss your season. May you not miss your season. this timing laid out in scriptures. In Numbers chapter 1, interestingly we have them do two verses following each other. Numbers 130, 32, 34, 36, 38, 48, I mean 40. From 20 years and upward. I don't number them who are able to go to war 20 years old. That's when you get enlisted in the adventure of life. From 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go for to war 
in Israel. Thou and Aaron shall number them by their families. And then you go down the line, it begins to call them family by family, and it began to number them from 20 years upward. You say, to where? Now, chapter 4 of Numbers, we saw the next segment of the seasons of life. Chapter 4 of Numbers, verse 30. From 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years old. That means the other one is 20 to 30. You are expected to find your bearing in the race of life. And from 30 to 50, you are required to prove your worth in the pursuit of the vision of your life. Some highly dedicated one, they began to impact before their 30. Everyone in genuine pursuit of God's vision for his life is expected to flow in to between 30 and 50 and begin to prove their worth in the pursuit of the assignment. It's all classified. So from youth to young adult and to full grown adult. Life is an adventure in times and seasons. Life is an adventure in times and seasons. Some have eaten hamburger away. They've lost behind for their they just everybody's going somewhere, they just join and they start going. So men just followed up Solomon, not knowing where they were going. They said they went after him in their simplicity. Everybody's going to be in the Republic, let's go. Can we move forward to Code of Why not? <laughs> now, let's go to Burkina Faso. Let's go. And then you go and go and go and go and arrive nowhere. In the precious name of Jesus. Everybody here will not waste his life. Yeah. As a bird wanders from her nest, so is a man that wanders from his place. Proverbs 27, numbers 8. As a bird wanders from her nest, so is a man that wanders from his place. Therefore, let everyone abide in the same calling we are in his call. Let him abide there. Jacob said to Esau, Sell me your birthright. He said, What is this birthright to me? I said, I'm hungry. Hunger one day. Sold off a whole birthright. Hunger one day. In the precious name of Jesus. My prayer for you today is that no one will sell off his birthright. If it is your age of discovery, what do you do? Start building a library relevant to where you are heading for. Start building a library or you are building a mortuary without knowing. Start building a library for purpose of making discoveries, embarking on objective study, objective study, what am I looking for? Objective study. There was a time we sensed that our cell growth was stalled, because it was stalled, dancing around the same figure. And then I said, okay, I got prompted to buy 400 copies of building successful home sales and then we studied it with three objectives what are we doing that we should not be doing what should we be doing that we are not doing well enough 
what should we not be doing that we are doing? Objective study, not reading for form, objective. We made findings, did a review, and the sales jumped to 10,000 from 3,000 plus. Your season of discovery plays a demand on you. Only they that seek we ever find. It's your season of prayer and fasting. Why? Call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. It's your season of in-depth word study, word study, word study. A high taste for the world. A high taste for the world. A high taste for the world. Every one of us here shall be a definite, unmistakable improvement on your parents, no matter how high grace is upon their life. Yeah. You shall go above all the giants known in this commission. Yeah. Your generation will be a definite improvement on our own generation. As you commit yourself to the things that will be happening on this mountain, where God is set to empower you and I for next levels of dominion. And so shall it be for you. And so shall it be for you. And so shall it be for you. Amen. Let's bring home these seasons through some scriptural illustrations. Joseph was sold into slavery at 17. He maintained the fear of God as a lifestyle. How can I do this in a sin against God? He testified subsequently, but I fear God. You can't fear God, I don't know. He had integrity. He could be trusted. And at that, he ascended the throne of Egypt. Genesis 41 and verse 46. David brought down Goliath at 17 with a hot, undying passion for God. He didn't go for the word. He went for God. How, who is this? Some circumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God. I would rather die than watch this continue. Passion drove him against Goliath, brought him down. And 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4, he ascended the throne at 30. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, our perfect example, knew his mission at 12. It was an amazement at 12. Don't you think I should be about my father's business? They were astonished at his questions and answers at the age of 12. Luke 2, 47 to 49. And he blew the world open at 30. Luke 3, 23. Times and seasons of life, no guesswork. No guesswork. And guess what? The Bible says, in the end time, and a child shall lead them. What happens? So we're going to have teenage major authors. Teenage big time entrepreneurs. Just get hooked onto God. You become an amazement to your world. You become an amazement to your world in no time. Get hooked onto God. 